the only way we could retain humanity and stay as human beings is by having around us the world of people like Brodsky, people who had the integrity of value separate from the politicized and ideologically driven value of the official Soviet Union. That was that what sustained us being humans. In many ways, people like Brodsky are responsible for maintaining humanity for us. Now, a lot of those people were at the time dead, like Pasternak again, you know, like uh, Bulgakov, like Tsvetaeva, Akhmatova, um, writers, painters, sculptors, um, you know, scientists, you know. Um, all of that was a mechanism by which we literally stayed physically as human beings alive. Now, you appreciate that afterwards, you appreciate it later, years later, but it is still with you then even, you know, and it certainly is still with you now. I remember when Brodsky died, it was the first time in my life that I actually thought of not a member of the family passing away as a, really a moment which impacts me. And it impacted me very clearly because I remember I said to myself at that time, and it was, you know, first of all, was with me as well, around as well at the time, you know, and I said, you know, I said it out loud, I said, this is the end of an era in which I could have looked forward every year to something new coming out of Brodsky. It is a marker. From now on, everything I read of Brodsky is something that I've read before. And even though it has that infinite capacity, you always read it now with a constant awareness that this is it. Mm. You know, there is that finality, there is that point beyond which Brodsky becomes no longer Brodsky as a person, but Brodsky becomes a source for what you yourself can mine out of it, you know? Yeah, like, like um, an idea. Exactly. Like a you, living idea. You, you, you take his ideas, you take his expressions, and you start positioning them in your life, and they become different, okay? Now, there is a great reward in doing that. Mm -hmm. There is a great, you know, interest in doing that, but the problem is that you still are constantly aware that what you are doing is you are feeding yourself into him, mm -hmm. because he himself is no longer capable of feeding himself into you. Mm -hmm. You know, but the relationship you get—I mean, like, the relationship I get out of reading Brodsky is very, very much a relationship which is a personal, you know, personal interaction, personal relationship. You know, it is a friend. And it's a friend to whom you aspire because, you know, the yeah. quality of that, the, the level at which discourse takes place in his work is just an amazing capacity. Yeah. Being someone who works with data sets and with the economical... Less data sets, more the ideas, you know. I mean, yeah. I'm a theoretical person, so I don't work as much with data sets. Um, but, you know, what's interesting is that, I mean, like... I'm not. I'm, I wouldn't be traditional in in a sense of a kind of, a kind of economist. I mean, um, I have a lot of interest outside of economics um, in art, you know, and all. But that's not um, the point. Is that I can read him with mathematical mind. I can read him with philosophical mind, and I can read him with personal mind. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, with whichever mind I'm reading it, there is always a concept of beauty which is always present mm -hmm. in the room. And it is an unparalleled experience, absolutely unparalleled experience. Um, interestingly enough, uh, friends of mine to whom I, intru whom I introduced to Brodsky, myself, by giving them the books, and uh, sometimes very bombastically telling them that, look, you know, this is the best English language writer you will ever read in poetry in your lifetime. And uh, they come back and they say exactly the same thing. They say, yes, you are right. You were right. Uh, and it's just, it's an, you know, it is a level, you know, there is a theory of value which basically goes along the lines that the, at certain point in time, at certain level of achievement, the level of achievement relatively makes no sense anymore. You are at the peak, and that peak is equivalent to your peers who are at the same type of peak level. In other words, what it says is that Paganini cannot be compared to Beethoven. There is no point of compare because mm. the relatives no longer exist at that stage. Um, Brodsky is certainly there. Certainly there. But 
while different works of different writers, composers, you know, painters can have relative value to their own body of work, which is discernible. You can take a painting which you can consider a minor painting and lower achievement by the same art artist um, compared to other ones. In Brodsky's case, there isn't really. Maybe Garbunov and Garchikov, I'm not the biggest fan of that poem because mm -hmm. it is Brodsky's attempt at sustaining in a very long piece that which he was par excellence achieved in a shorter poems. Mm -hmm. Perhaps that is an example where there is a bit of a forced effort put into trying to achieve that, sustain, uh, achieve that sustainability over the long run. But beyond that, there is no way of saying that this particular collection of Brodsky's poems or this particular poem is better or worse than another. Mm. I mean, it is just consistent, persistent delivery of sheer brilliance. Yeah. And so, yeah. Anyways, but yeah, you, you can get, you know, if you want to do whatever you want to do with that thing, you know, and get the memory, you know, up and all, you know. Yeah, we can if I get another chance. Yeah, 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 I would love to. Yeah, yeah. Also, if you're ever in the UK, um, 